Alright guys, it's time to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And as Dashi gives his thoughts on Modern Warfare 2 not being quite as good as a lot of pros were making it out to be a couple of weeks ago, he's also made his thoughts be clear on Scump and Shotzi and how good they are at the current state of the game and the fact that he really wants Scump to keep going next year, even though Scump doesn't necessarily respond in kind to his praise. But very much in tweeting your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. I thought this was really awesome for because as well from David here, the Mount Rushmore of Call of Duty, with of course Karma, Clayster, Scump, and Crimson. So I think this is honestly the right four to have. I know people would talk about nade shots. I feel like people, you know, potentially if you're looking at top players of all time, formal might be marginally above Clayster on some people's list. But to me, in terms of legendary Call of Duty players and names, Clay's got to be here in my opinion. So thought this is really nice to be honest. Now, first of all, I just wanted to mention this real quick because you guys might have seen it from Too Quick actually. On, um, well, on the flank yesterday, when Aix a couple of times now was talked about Too Quick back in the day being kind of the, the piece on that complexity team. Effectively, they swapped Clayster out, or they swapped Too Quick out, brought Clayster in, I believe, and then they become the best team in the game for quite some time. Now, you know, Too Quick, Aix has been kind of roasting him recently, saying he's a Dave Paddy esque figure that, uh, you know, basically didn't do all that much on the map, didn't drop that much damage, effectively just needed to be dropped. Now, Too Quick, of course, is not particularly happy about this kind of a characterization of him and saying, oh, bro, you know, where could I get on the show? My name keeps coming up. I would like at least to defend my name. So that would be kind of spicy if Zoom was like, okay, yeah, down, let's get him on. Too Quick versus Aix to kind of maybe air out some old beef from out about a decade ago that'd be rather spicy so we'll see how that one develops but i wanted to mention this with regard to modern warfare 2 because like um look we all we know all the talk from the pro players the last couple of weeks or so wow this game is going to be really special really looking forward to it wow infinity ward killed it this year all this type of classic stuff they tweet out now um, apparently that's actually not the case at all and i think it's kind of rare actually that we get thoughts from pros before the season that the fact the game actually might not be that good usually it's all positives but we know what to expect at this point right so tom henderson actually one of the leakers says i hope they cut half the stuff out that they're intending to put in the multiplayer to be honest hope i'm wrong on this but some of the stuff they're adding just seems terrible so we heard some rumors the other day that like um, on maps like wet work for example some of these like crates and stuff that um, usually would just be solid in place where they are normally they can like move around and stuff like that potentially they can do that certainly in campaign they thought okay we've, we've kind of coded it for campaign why not just add it to multiplayer that might be fun but um you know i'm sure it's going to be terrible if they did decide to add it and you know to go further stuff like this as tom henderson says there's some sort of decoy soldier that springs up and aims at you when you get too close or will just blow you up if you walk over it why is that type of stuff in the game love to see stuff like that when you want like a 20 streak you're about to get in the nuke and then you get blown up by something completely outside of your control i get that it's cool it's probably pretty cool in playtesting and whatnot but unfortunately the metrics of people playtesting or developing versus the average cod player is completely different you can bet there'll be a decoy in every doorway and corner right so this is kind of a frustrating thing again because we always like the games in theory that are the kind of competitive side is as close to pubs like regular what normal people play effectively as it possibly can can be. Now, um, you add stuff like this that you then have to remove from competitive using the map editor, if that's even going to be a thing, as we talked about a few days ago, or by uh, kind of disabling dynamic map elements or whatever in the settings. Like, um, it just takes those things further apart. So, I'll just share Dashi's thoughts on this because like, he kind of gave his perspective on a few things while playing Valorant the other day, saying that, um, you know, effectively, this game, people are talking about it being like the original Modern Warfare 2. That's not the case at all. He reckons it's just pretty much another Modern Warfare reboot that um, effectively isn't really going to be all that special, right? People have been gassing it up, but actually, like, um, um, there's nothing particularly good about it. It's like, the, it's not, like everyone's gassing because it's like MW2, but does anyone have fun? I don't think it's MW2 like how it was like back in the day. It's gonna be like Modern Warfare. It's gonna just be another Modern Warfare. Like no cap. Here we go. I don't know if it's gonna be crazy to be honest. Yeah. It's not exactly the most promising thoughts, of course. And look, in fairness, it's not like Dashi had the greatest time back in Modern Warfare, the original, whereas his teammate on this game, Shotzi and Illy, most certainly did, right? So I'm sure some Optic fans are looking at this game and thinking, okay, hang on a second here, we've got Shotzi and Illy, the world champions from the original Modern Warfare. Might not be a bad game, all things considered, it is very similar to the original. But I mean, yeah, certainly Dashi was also giving his thoughts on Shotzi and Scump and just his teammates in this game and how they've been playing lately. And Scump also gives his perspective on the drama that went down during Major 3 itself, the whole splashy situation that we'll see here while well, his response to that in just a couple of seconds. So wanted to mention this in Money Hill stats just on the topic of Optic actually because their record so far this season in hard points is actually pretty much the best in the entire game. We can see this is stage one to three, not including the kickoff or the pro am. We can see Optic are 27 and 15 in terms of hard points. Their record against the top one to three is actually really impressive. I guess a lot of this actually is up against FaZe, or of course they're five and over this season. So they will have a good record. But it is interesting actually the fact that London, for example, Boston are another example, and um, in fairness, even FaZe to a certain degree have a pretty 
pretty bad half point record against the best teams in the game. We've certainly seen that with the likes of Boston. Whenever they play the best teams, they get generally pretty much smoked. And um, of course, Optic have a great half point record against the bottom teams. But it is interesting actually just to see that FaZe have a dominant record against um, everyone that isn't the top guys. And Optic actually don't have that good of a half point record against the kind of middle of the pack teams, which is rather interesting that they sometimes do seem to kind of play to the level of their competition. But still, their half point record is the best in the game, technically. So is their control record, of course. But it's their search and destroy at about 50 50, which is causing them some issues so far this season, right? If they can up their search and destroy, that's probably going to be the key factor for them as the season progresses because game fives are going to need to be won. Now, of course, in this series, they didn't actually go to a game five, and Scum gives his thoughts on the kind of whole splashy drama when they're up 1 0 against these in the losers' brackets, go up 4 1. Dashy falls off the map, and after that, the team seemed to lose full. But Scum said, look, it wasn't Dashy's fault, it was pretty much the entire team's fault, and he was also taking a fair bit of responsibility onto himself, saying, like, look, I don't really have bad series in this game. That was my first bad series in a very long time taking responsibility on himself I thought was pretty good of him but also recognizing it was a team thing that got outplayed map three and four rather than just kind of the individual thing that Dashi fell off and then the team lost full like um you know it was kind of a more encompassing team dynamic than that one but also Dashi gives his thoughts on Scum and Shotzi saying that you know Shotzi's still in his opinion by far the best player in the game and Scum's also been god like this year and certainly doesn't want him to go away anytime soon but uh, Scum doesn't seem to listen to his gas well yeah you guys are funny man splashy yeah yeah I've seen it that's not why we lost I mean we got outplayed pretty heavily. I mean, we should have won that map, but like we got outplayed pretty heavily on 3 4. I mean, I got shit on map 4 bad. I didn't know what the was going on map 4, brother. I was like, I was getting trick shotted. I feel like that's the first bad series that I've had in like a really long time. So it was kind of frustrating. Like a bad series. Like I've had like point nines, you know, but that was, it was not great. It was not great. Gotta do better than that. But then, that, like, the reason why Ant gets all like, dude, Ant, I don't think you guys understand. Ant is literally, like, in my opinion, I think he's the best player ever, bro. Like, that's obviously way too, like, A bias, B, like, his career hasn't even been that long, you know what I mean? But I just know, like, bro, if this guy played any other, if, what, if this guy came in in packs, bro, if Shotzi came in in packs, you think this guy would have been worse? Like, nah, the comp was different. What? This guy would have been clipping. Oh. Attackers win. So, bro, Seth is, like, over. I actually think Ant's the best player in the game. Not just the best player. Ant, bro, dude, like it's it's insane what that fucking guy does. But I do think Seth is like the second best sub in the game. You know what I mean? Like I think Seth, God, like at this game, but it's like he's just spawned in with Ant. You know what I mean? But I I see. That's why I tip him. But like he doesn't like he doesn't listen to my tipping. Never listens to it. Seth is raw in this game. So I certainly think for a large part of this year, Scumb and Shotzi were kind of almost number one, number two SMGs in the entire game. As of late, I think the story has maybe changed to some degree. You've got the likes of Hydra up there. You've got Pred, certainly in that conversation right now. Of course, like Abizi and Sim have kind of turned up as well in the last few weeks. Of course, Abizi still drops 0.8 in Grand Finals, but I think played his, maybe his best Call of Duty all year back at, of course, Major 3 in that Grand Finals or just, you know, that event in general, right? So I think certainly like uh, Shotzi still the best SMG in the game. Scumb, I think, is probably top five right now at some points this series probably been top two right so i think he certainly deserves all the gas he can get from his teammates it's the smgs of course that are going to win you series generally at the end of the day and i mean look at these are the numbers right here for this entire season so far just looking at the fact that outside of search and destroy where scum is negative he has a 1.12 in control a 1.03 in hard points but he also has so many incredibly impactful moments this season especially it seems recently in search and destroy as well right so i think scum deserves the credit like um dashi says like he doesn't really seem to take a lot of this stuff on boards because we know that the scum always talks about okay yeah i'll step away next year maybe this is my final year competing and i doesn't really want to give any you know further clues on whether he is going to play next season like he's obviously been working a lot, watching a lot of the gameplay watching a lot of the trailers trying to figure out whether he's going to like this game or not of course i'm sure we'll find out when he plays it right if he doesn't like it he might decide this is the year for him to step away but i feel like I mean, a lot of people think that that competitive drive is still going to be there especially because the likes of dashi are still giving him an awful lot of gas and understandably so but like um, he's playing incredibly well so far this year why would you step away if you're still competing at this level rambo has even said that he reckons He's got at least two or three more years in him and is eventually still playing like Prime Scumpy. We'll see what happens, of course, on the other side of things about the Illy situation, right? That's uh, yet to be resolved, right? What's going to happen there? Because, of course, we're about 10 days away now from the start of the qualifiers for Major 4. So hopefully Illy's back in business there. I'm sure we'll get some updates here over the coming days, hopefully from the optic side as well, to know exactly what is going on. Now, this also from the Flexer side, just wanted to mention this because we like looking at some enabled tier list right here. And this is another classic because, like, again, I don't think this is just overwhelmingly terrible, but it is rather strange. 
interesting, first of all, we've got Priester here over Attach. I think that's probably about right, but I feel like Attach is kind of more of the flex maybe than, than Priester is, but I don't know. We'll just kind of leave that for another day, I suppose. But I feel like this A and B tier are a little bit questionable, just because I think the S tier is probably fair enough. Selium, if you're going to have him as a flex, is certainly number one. I thought, honestly, Tenethby is kind of the main AR right now on the team, at least from what, they're, what they've been saying. But, um, you know, with RCs being the flex, but still, he's number one, whichever kind of category you put him in. And then Sib right here, also in the S tier. I think that's probably fair. I think he is better than the players below him. I do kind of um, always bias this. Like, my rankings here are always generally biased towards placings more than just individual levels. So, like, at Tim, I think he's very good. I wouldn't necessarily have him as the third best flex in the entire game, though. Skies is certainly up there. Paul X, I feel like, is a bit too high. Like, his stats have been good, but, um, you know, just the way that New York have been playing lately, he's definitely fallen off, I think, a bit from his level back when they first brought him in back in stage two. So, I think for now, I think Paul X would be a B tier player. And I think I would just swap Cami and Paul, to be honest, because Cami right now is definitely a better player than Paul, in my opinion. So, like, Cami has to be A tier at least, based on how he's playing lately, in my perspective, at the very least. I think Illy, we can safely put at B for now, just because you don't really know how Illy's been playing or how he's going to play. So, I feel like just having him as B makes sense. Gizmo, who as well, is maybe justified, but then again, like, he's also been out for a couple of months, so not really sure where he's going to be. So, maybe just Illy and Giz in B, just because you can't really tell what's going to happen there. Draza in C, I feel like is maybe underrating him a bit. I think he's actually been rather good lately. Definitely better than Gunless and all the guys below, in my opinion, at least. So, I'd probably have Draza up in B with these other guys. Maybe even Gizmo would drop down a tier just because I don't think he was particularly good before he stepped away. Maybe, you know, external reasons contributing to that one. So yeah, those are the few changes I would make. The D and the C tier probably aren't too bad right now. And just to finish up with this from Breaking Point, I'm guessing Lyman made this one. Rather interesting discussion. Pick one player per role to create the ultimate dynasty roster. So in Cold History, there's considered to really be only two dynasties that are like guaranteed dynasties. The Complexity Dynasty, the Optic Dynasty, of course. But uh, for Eco Impact, we're kind of briefly considered a dynasty back in, I guess, like mid-2013 time because they won, I think, like three events in a row back in Black Ops 2. They were the first team that really like asserted dominance in Call of Duty history that won the World Championship, won a few other events as well. Parasite, Miracles, Killer and Karma. Karma been on all three dynasties apart from the kind of recent phase team that some people consider a dynasty. Some people do not quite as of yet. But I do think if they win champs this year, they will kind of cement their status here. It's like, uh, yeah, effectively you got to choose ARs and two SMGs. Some of these players don't fit perfectly into these categories. The likes of, you know, Aix didn't really use an AR back in Ghost because it was a three SMG meta effectively. He used a lot of the vector, but you've got to make it work to some degree. It does depend, of course, what era and what game you're looking to build a team for, and also, like, um, you know, whether these players are in their primes or not. But if I had to take prime players on this list, I would definitely take Formal as one of my main ARs. I think I would take Ghost Crim as my second main AR over kind of the Optic team at Crim. It's like um, I probably have Formal. Got to have Scump, I think, from C as the SMG here as well. So And then I would take probably either Karma or a BT, depending on the game. If I'm if I'm going for, like, a Jetpack era type title where Karma was so good, or, like, even earlier than that, right, back in the Advanced Warfare, Ghost, Black Ops 2, like, I would take Karma. But if I'm preparing for one of these more recent games, I'd probably pair up Scump and BZ with Ghost Crim and, uh, well, IW Formal, I suppose, would be his prime. But very much a treat to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit on the like button and tell to YouTube gods. It's a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.